have you seen the new updates to ChatGPT? No, I don't care about that. It's, I'm so tired of that hype. No, I'm telling you, these are a big deal. Really? If you don't pay attention and you don't start implementing them, your job will probably be taken over. Okay, I'm listening. Tell me more. Now, in all seriousness, this is a really big deal, this announcement about being able to prompt more than just with text, using images and also your voice. And I'm going to share with you in this video exactly why that is, how you can use these new features that are coming to ChatGPT for learning how to code, learning design, really learning any technical, or non-technical skill using these two different prompt methods. And I really wanted to dive into this and make a video about it because as I was reading the news today, seeing all the headlines come up as to how you can use these prompts for things such as fixing your bike or uh, fixing things around the house, it caught me thinking. You know what would be really interesting to use this for is learning to code, to learn UX UI design, to learn these different skills in a visual way and a more interactive way. It's no surprise we all learn so differently and I think it's we're going to see so quickly that the old way, if you will, of learning was just sitting there, reading a piece of paper, taking it in and then having to go from there. Now, that is a great way and still super valuable, but now with these new ways coming out that are more interactive and making it feel you have this personal one-on-one -on -one tutor, I think people are going to be able to level up and upskill at a much quicker pace. So let's get into it. Oh, before we do, hit that subscribe button for more tech coding career related videos. Leave in the comments any other questions you have. I will do my best to answer every single one of them. You can hold me to that. All right, now let's get into it. The images I think are where we are going to see the biggest interaction as far as upskilling and learning quickly. So let's save that to the end of this video or the, the larger portion of this video and start with the voice interactions. So what is so good about voice interactions as opposed to text? Well, when we think about learning in a classroom, learning with a tutor, we are learning and interacting in a two-way format. Unlike where we are currently at with chatbots, where it's we are Yes, interacting and they are responding, it still feels a little bit one dimensional. Now with being able to have these voice conversations, it makes it feel as though you can learn quicker by having more accurate conversations. You can really, what you say is going to differentiate as to what you type. And a lot of us who are learners that want to interact with others, this is a great way to do so. Before we go any further though, let's share a little clip that ChatGPT shared or OpenAI shared about what this will be like. And as a side note, one thing that really uh, took me off guard or I noticed instantly was how much the voice in ChatGPT sounds like an actual human. I think it's really close to getting there. What do you think? Let's take a listen. In a pocket or under a tree, oh, where could my little keys be? I checked in the fridge behind the TV. Even the cat looked up. Up as if to plea. They jingle, they jangle, they open the door. Always end up on a different floor. I searched high and low. Left, oh, left and right. Why must you vanish out of plain sight? All right, so let's hop into exactly what are some ideas that you can use this for. And as a side note, this is still rolling across subscriptions. I am a paid user, so hopefully I will get access to this very soon, but they say it's going to be rolling across the board uh, equally soon. So even if you're not a paid user, you should receive this update very soon. In the meantime though, until we all get those updates, let's go through some example prompts. So when you do have that update, you can easily start doing it. Let's say in this case, you are learning JavaScript, specifically React. And for this, you want to have a conversation, a voice conversation with ChatGPT on React. Through text, it's kind of stagnant in the sense of you'd be like, explain to me React like a 10 year old or whatever the case is that you want it to be explained to you like. Now you can be like, hey, ChatGPT, or whatever you want to call the chatbot. That's weird. Hey chat, that was awkward. You get what I'm saying though. Explain to me React in a few sentences that makes it really easy for me to understand. I'm a student in computer science with this background and I have a little bit of trouble understanding technical things. So make sure that it's easy to understand. Maybe at the level of say, you're explaining it to 
a 10 year old, a 15 year old, whatever the case is. But you can see how much more detailed I was able to get in such a quick amount of time versus using the text. Uh, and I think that's one thing we will see is our prompts will become so much more accurate with this. It feels much more human to be able to speak to this chatbot versus typing. And I think a lot of us will feel that way. And naturally it will make more of us in tune to becoming a prompt engineer. I always say, or I have said in the past, that prompt engineering will probably turn not into a specific role, but rather will evolve that everyone is a prompt engineer in a way that needs to learn, just like we all have learned to varying degrees how to Google, especially as a developer or other roles, you really hone in on that skill. The same will be true for prompt engineering. And now we are getting to a point where we can prompt engineer simply with our voice. All right, now let's get into the part we've all been waiting for, or I've been waiting for, which is inputting an image and prompting it that way via an image. First though, let's take a look at the demo that ChatGPT shared of doing just this. Now you can see here on the demo, they input uh, about a bike. They wanted some help fixing their bike. And one thing that we will get to in this video is how they use it to specify, ask a question based on ChatGPT's response. So is this the lever? And then sending an updated image of the lever or asking if it is. Also to note how they now have access to the draw tool. So you can draw on these images for specifics if you are looking to point to part of an image or anything like that. And this is really interesting. This is what really got me excited when I was reading through the updates was using images now to interact with ChatGPT, mainly because I'm a very visual person, but I wanna share with you some ways that when we start thinking of how we can learn with images and ChatGPT, it really will open up your, your eyes to the possibilities. Picture this, we are a designer and we have a Figma file we built this beautiful landing page, right? It's just in Figma. So we export it as, say we export it as a PDF or any kind of image format. Now what we can do is simply upload that image to ChatGPT and let's say write code for me, use JavaScript to build me this one pager from this image. That is now possible. That's wild. Also as a side note, I feel like there's so many tools right now that turn Figma into code that this might just completely wipe them all out. I don't know, what do you think? That's one use case I thought was really interesting is enabling non-technical people to build faster with code. And if they have an idea or um, an app that they want to build, I'm not saying it can be production level ready, of course not, but what they can do is make a prototype now with this image prompting. This is really breaking barriers. Another thing I thought was interesting was I like system design, system architecture. I like to geek out about it. I just think it's super fascinating and there's so many layers to it. So I was thinking what would be really interesting here is in ChatGPT, one of their plugins actually will create diagrams for you. Kind of like Mermaid JS if you're familiar with that. So it'll create this diagram of how systems work, um, whether it be through technical or non-technical systems, but let's say technical systems. So maybe it is, how is this website built? And it goes through the different frameworks and, and systems used. What you can now do with that image that is a, of a diagram is input it into ChatGPT. Yes, get it to explain it to you, but also to really get it to interact with that image more. So maybe it is something like, build me a similar website using this architecture. I don't know, to me that just blows my mind just with that single prompt, the possibilities. And once again, these aren't, you know, through this one prompt, we're not going to get enterprise ready websites. What we are going to get is a really great starting point, which will allow for so many more people to build new businesses, come up with new ideas, feel more enabled to build and learn quickly. So how is this going to affect your job today? Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, we've seen now more than ever how AI is continuing to grow at such a fast rate and gone are the days where we can just kind of push it off and think that, yeah, whatever, it's not a big deal or this is super hyped. The hype is here to stay and it's continuing to go faster and faster. So once this is available, I really encourage you to tinker around with it, build with it, Try using it to learn something new through the ways I shared with you. Uh, use it to lean on for a project you're working on. Obviously don't use this at work unless your company or business that you work for has given you permission to. I think that goes without saying. But the possibilities with this update really can expand our learning to the next level. All right, I'm curious to hear what do you want to learn with these new updates? Leave in the comments. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career, 
AI, you know, all the good stuff uh, related topics and I will see you soon. All right, let's get building.